Is this a truly autonomous vehicle or is this like a Roomba robot for farming where it's in a small geofence field, it goes back and forth doing whatever it needs to do in the crops? No, Ed, it's great to be here. Fully autonomous. That's uh, the first time ever that we've been able to take the operator out of the cab of the machine. You know, in farming, as you well well understand, we've had the, the connection between the operator, the, the human, and the machine for forever. And this is really groundbreaking in the sense that we finally get to break that connection and the machine goes out and does this work on its own. There was some surprise, particularly from investors, about this announcement, the speed you've been able to do this. Is this a market-ready product? I mean, how many fully autonomous tractors will be in fields this year, next year. What volumes can you produce at? Yeah, we're still playing around with volumes. We're going to be slow in introduction. We want to make sure that we get this right. We're thinking, you know, 10 to 50. We will be in market this year, though, with those products, with growers in their fields doing work uh, for them in their operations. So I talked to a lot of folks in the trucking industry, for example, and we talk about autonomy especially in the COVID era where drivers have dropped out sick as a really good tool. Where does this fit in in agriculture? Is this something that creates jobs or does it take jobs away? That's a great question. So the, the issue, the issue in agriculture is labor availability. You know, we've had this movement of population from rural environments to urban environments. Uh, the world population growing from 8 billion to 10 billion people by 2050. Food production going up by 50% as a consequence of that. All of those things really drive this intensity around producing more food with less and less labor is one of those things that we need to accommodate. And we really see autonomy as the solution to that. Farming in any market, whether it's the United States, the UK, Europe, for those farmers, the margins are very small, right? The capital investment for this machinery is very high. Are people going to be able to actually able to afford to implement this technology? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, w the way we think about it, certainly it reduces the amount of labor that's required. Uh, but the, the other significant portion is agriculture is very time sensitive, right? And it's important that the job that's being done gets done at the right time of the year. And if you don't have the labor to do it, you often pay a significant penalty in terms of the, the amount of crop that you can produce. And so I think the payback for growers uh, is pretty straightforward. It's, it's in many cases, it's a difference between getting the job done at all and not getting done. One funny quirk of this is that a farmer can control the vehicle with their smartphone. Just talk me through how that would work. Why would a farmer need to be able to have control via an app? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is, this is all about the farmer's business, right? So they want to be able to interact with the machine. They want to see what it's doing. They want to make sure that it's doing the, the job that, that it's expected to do at the quality uh, that they expect it to be done at. And so they want to interact with the machine in, in the way that they would have interacted, perhaps in the, in the, in the cockpit, as you, as you mentioned. But since they're not there, we try to emulate that experience for them on a mobile device. All right, give me the inside scoop. Who are you talking to on the commercial side? Which fleet operators, which kind of scale volume deals are you doing? Yeah, you know, I think that's the great thing about the solution is that it really scales, you know, from, from small family farms all the way up through larger farms. That labor issue that we really that we talked about earlier is really persistent no matter what the size and scale of the farm is, whether that's one tractor or 10 tractors. All right, we just got 30 seconds here, but what does farming look like in five years from now? How many or what proportion of tractors are autonomous? You know, I think it's uh, significant. I think the adoption for this technology is going to be quick. We have conditioned, right. uh, you know, operators of machines over the last 10, 20 years with higher levels of automation. And autonomy is just that final step. We've got customers who are actually asking us, why do I have to be in the cockpit at all? This is the solution. I think they'll adopt right. it readily.